Long-term viewers may remember that I've always been sailing this boat with the assistance of electric propulsion. This one was the first upgrade. It ran on 24 volts and says 86 pounds of thrust. That's almost 40 kgs. This could push the boat okay in flat water, but really need just a little bit more. A Tokido is the premium off-the-shelf option. It comes with an integrated battery and a hefty price tag. I found this horrifying video that shows it has a circuit board at the bottom end under the water, which of course fails if water gets in there. And interestingly, it has a very small high riving motor and a planetary drive to gear it down to propeller speed. The budget option is the Hankai 4. It has the motor on top and a gearbox like a small petrol outboard. It seems really loud. I decided that what I wanted was a brushless motor, the motor at the bottom, the and a direct out. drive with no gearboxes at all. This seemed like the best combination of efficient and quiet. After months of umming and ahhing, I finally decided to pull the trigger on a better electric motor setup. And a big thank you to Tom and Amanda and Ori for letting me receive mail at the tiny house. Can you hold this for me? You gotta point it. Point it. I think it's the motor. It wasn't quite heavy enough to be the battery. Oh, it is the battery. That's it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's actually like it's, you know, if I made this myself, it would be like this. Yeah. But oh, interesting. That, oh, it's just padded. But you saved some money, right? Yeah, this was actually this is actually pretty. I mean, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty I damn really good like good blueberry. container. And amp power is is it twenty four volt? Um, if I recall correctly, it is no, it's forty eight volt oh, and wow. forty okay. amp yeah. hours. You have a forty eight volt motor. Um, shortly, soon I will. Cool. Yeah. All this stuff came from AliExpress. I wouldn't let them do anything that And this battery looks like just a pack of um, like cells this. with a BMS. Always and then these, volts, um, it's fully charged. various yeah. fittings attached. Some of them are less than waterproof, which is disappointing. But I can remove, yeah, I'll just remove those. Come on. A couple days later, the motor arrived. It took months to get here, probably on the same ship as the battery. First impressions, the power felt good. Looks pretty good. This um, bracket looks just like the, the 12 volt ones, except that this is cast metal, not uh, plastic. Yeah, but it's still plastic. It looks pretty good actually. Yeah, and then turn it. And you can turn it like this. Yeah. There you go. It's going like two and a bit, two and a half. Uh, totally fine speed for just getting across the bay. One thing my little other motors sometimes struggle to do was turn through the wind. That's just a matter of speed because these uh, rudders are not very responsive unless you're moving. Um, but two and a half knots, that seemed to do it. And we're only on like, looks like half throttle, I think. I was loving the powerful new motor already, but I got a fright when I ran the battery flat. Guys, just, uh, so I just had, I had some battery problems. I was demotoring over from um, where I got Mihi back together, uh, over to here, which was, I don't know, about two miles. And the motor cut out. Um, luckily I had got the sails up, so I actually sailed this like ridiculous raft of two boats tied together um, over here to the anchorage. Yeah, the battery had just stopped and the display had gone off. When I got back in, I rigged up my inverter through the AC charger. Now I have this wired up through the load on that to there, which is telling me that it's doing 350 watts, which is more than we're pulling this AC charger rated for 250 well, that watts. probably has some inefficiency and that has some inefficiency so we're losing power but the battery's charging first my battery's broken I've got a better plan than that for charging that goes directly from the 
solar. Now this is the part of the system that made the whole thing viable. A step up MPPT charger. This allows me to charge the battery from a single 12 volt, actually 18 volt solar panel. Most of the appliances and electrical stuff you want on a boat run on 12 or 24 volts. But that isn't really viable for a propulsion system because you need a lot more power and drawing that much power through 12 volts means you have a lot of current and that means you need really big wires and really high power 12 volt motors just aren't available. You need to go 48 volt. 48 volts being the heavy medium where although you can get a shock it's not really a dangerous one and importantly it keeps the current within reasonable proportions. Now your average charge controller can only step the voltage down which means you need a panel array that produces a voltage higher than the battery charge voltage. For 12 volts that's easy because a single standard solar panel will give you 14 to maybe even 21 volts depending on how sunny it is. And with a charge controller like that I would need to have an array of four solar panels connected in series. And that would just take up a lot of space that I just didn't quite have. I looked for like more compact 24 volt panels and stuff like that but it just didn't seem like a viable option. But then I discovered the existence of the step up controller. This meant I could have an independent propulsion system with its own battery and charge it off a single standard solar panel. It also makes for a significantly more versatile propulsion system because I can take it off the big boat and put it on the little one and then have a powered crower for running errands or picking people up or um, going on expeditions up a river or something like that without the hassle of having to um, lose all power on the big boat um, so I can keep appliances there going. This unit is a little bit more hands-on so you need to set the voltage level that you want to charge at so I'm putting in 58 volts which I looked up is the correct voltage to charge a 48 volt lithium ferrous phosphate battery pack. They're currently 51 volts so that's charging at like 40 watts. Just off a single 150 watt panel. I'm uh, not usually getting that much it's been hasn't been sunny the whole time. Um, up to 54 which I think is like 50% lithium ferrous phosphate is different to your standard lithium battery actually a lithium cobalt battery that you get in phones laptops cars and that sort of stuff and most importantly for on a boat they are significantly less flammable I recommend watching some YouTube videos of batteries catching on fire and asking yourself do I want that fire on my boat I would also watch videos of people lighting bonds <laughs> control and asking if you want to have that stuff on your boat. The danger is that when a lithium cobalt battery catches fire, it releases oxygen, so the fire just keeps on burning and you can't put it out. However, the phosphate in the lithium ferrous phosphate battery holds on to the oxygen much more strongly and doesn't release it when it catches on fire. So even if you do manage to get the battery to catch on fire, you can put it out with a fire extinguisher. Now, I don't really know how likely a lithium fire is, but I do know someone who has had their e-bike catch on fire. And if I know someone that's happened to, it could happen to me too. Now an e-bike on fire is okay, I just jump off the e-bike. But my boat on fire, not okay. I don't want to have to abandon the boat because it's on fire. I would rather put that fire out. So, lithium ferrous phosphate batteries for me. This motor is slightly physically larger than the ones I had before. So fitting onto the bracket was a little bit of a problem. So I decided to make some modifications and see how could I, I could improve that. Of course, this thing does not come with a service manual, so I'm just going to have to take it apart and see how it works. The handle is held on by five bolts. The central one goes through the shaft. My friend has the same motor, which he mounts centrally on his boat, and he put the handle on backwards so it was more convenient. This motor came with its own tool that was an Allen key that had a Phillips head on one end. Seems to be about the only tool you need to do anything on it. Inside the handle is a switch which controls the direction and to detect the, the amount you've turned it, it uses a Hall effect sensor. Now in the boat plans, the upward bracket is on the side so that you can stand on the rear deck and pull the starter cord. But of course, electric outboards didn't exist in 1978 when the boat was designed. Later worms have outboard brackets on pivoting little pods like this. Um, I just made up my own one. And I designed this bracket for a 10 horsepower Yamaha, which I long ago gave up on as too unreliable and heavy. I cut down the outboard bracket and moved it into the center. 
think this is uh, going to be much better. I decided to turn this head part sideways so that the handle could come up a bit higher. Looks pretty much like an e-bike controller. The big red and black wires are the plus and minus 48 volts going to the battery. Those go to the controller and then the green, yellow and blue wires are the three phases that go down to the motor. By turning the controller sideways, the handle could come up higher and this meant it fit much better on my boat. Also, this gave me a great idea. I could cut a hole in the back of the cockpit for the handle to come through and then I could quickly deploy the motor and also be able to reach the speed control easily. I also thought it would be a good idea if water could never get down the shaft, so I screwed it in some silicon sealant. Reattaching the controller was a little bit tricky. I found it necessary to screw the wires down so that they would be in the right place before attaching the controller on top. Then I unscrewed the lines one at a time and then attached the same color line coming from the motor controller. and then I covered the electrical contacts in Vaseline to prevent corrosion. Also note the piece of black electrical tape there, that's to cover a completely unnecessary bright green LED that would otherwise illuminate the entire cockpit area at night. Well, it's now been about six months since I started making this video, so I've got quite a bit of experience with the motor. In fact, I've cruised all the way from the far north to Chatham Island and now I'm at the northern end of the South Island. So it's going fantastic, it's great. Especially with the quick deploy setup, I think it actually has many advantages compared to a, a petrol motor, especially being um, reliability. Like you have an electric starter on your petrol motor. Like I was trying to figure out why I kept on seeing, why did OEC sailboats, they arrive at the, you know, they sail somewhere, then they take the sail down and motor in while they still have a fair wind. And then I thought about this for a while and I realized even with like a diesel engine, even if it's like reliable, you don't really know if it's going to start. It's a better idea to make sure it starts while you still have plenty of room to handle the situation if it doesn't. So you never see other people, I never see other people sail onto the anchor. Um, but with electric motor, it's totally cool. Um, like check that it goes, it's only going to pretty much going to be the wiring is the problem. Check that it goes sailor and you can totally just start it at the last moment. I don't really have that much battery capacity which is fine actually. I can do a couple of miles. If there's a headwind I'll just kind of plan to go somewhere else. So it's like just enough you're actually sailing. You're a sailboat, you're not a motor sailor. Never have to go on by petrol. Don't have to mess with carburetors, spark plugs. Just the wiring has to be good. Um, but that's really not hard. Corrosion on the wiring is the only maintenance issue. You still need to like plan plan where you want to sail to, taking into account the weather, which I actually enjoy, to be honest. I feel that that is much more aware of nature's doing. You're in more in, ha in harmony with nature, more aware of nature. Um, that's, what, that's why we're going sailing. So that's my electric motor setup. It's working really well for me, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see me make more videos, please post a comment because that's the number one thing that encourages me to make videos.